Virgin Australia cut 750 jobs. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here, Stein of Coffee in Hand, and I thought we would have a look at this article detailing Virgin Australia's slashing of 750 jobs after posting a loss this morning. Now, Virgin Australia slashed 750 jobs after posting a $349 million loss. Virgin Australia is planning to cut 750 head office and corporate roles to slash $75 million a year in costs as it seeks to rebound from a $349 million full year loss. Does everyone remember when Virgin was the hot new airline on the block? You know, they couldn't do anything wrong. They were expanding. Really cheap prices. $349 down. The company reduced its net loss from an even bigger 681 million last year. However, its underlying performance, excluding one-off costs and gains, was substantially worse. Virgin's underlying loss before tax of 71.2 million was a big drop from a profit of 64.4 million the year before. The airline's new boss, Paul Scurra, attributed the rapid descent in profits to subdued trading conditions in the second half of the financial year, combined with rising fuel and foreign exchange costs and increased operational costs. Rising fuel, foreign exchange costs. This is the problem, guys, when the dollar goes down. Fuel goes up and other costs that are dependent on that exchange also go up. Virgin said it faced 159 million in fuel and foreign exchange headwinds, but has now hedged in excess of 90% of his forecast 2019-2020 financial year fuel consumption against price increases and extended hedging into 2021. The airline is also engaged in a substantial cost-cutting program with a back office simplification to merge the corporate and operational functions of its domestic, regional and Tiger Air operations. This will facilitate a 750 staff reduction in its corporate and head office workforce with expected savings of $75 million per annum. That is a large number of people to lose their jobs. Virgin is also reviewing its fleet, network and capacity levels in order to manage costs and meet weaker market demand. Weaker market demand. The airline reduced capacity, the number of seats available by 1.5% over May and June and expects a further reduction in the first half of the current 2020 financial year. None of these things are screaming economic confidence, are they? None of them at all. Particularly if you reduce seat capacity. And I know a lot of business people who fly Virgin. You don't just all fly business class, class particularly when you're trying to save money, guys, in tough times. Virgin has already paused fleet renewal with no new aircraft craft arriving in financial year 2019 and no f f further aircraft due until t July 2021. The delay in new aircraft was triggered by the airline's deferral of its Boeing 737 MAX orders after the plane was involved in two separate fatal accidents with other airlines. Virgin will also try to squeeze other suppliers to extract a further $50 million in cost savings. Here it is. Does everyone remember when calls was discovered to be putting pressure on its suppliers. Do you remember what that was like all through the media? Okay, so this is going to have a flow on effect. It's not just going to be the 750 staff losing their jobs. It's going to be every single one of these suppliers who's also going to lose revenue. $50 million as well. I'd hate to be one of their suppliers right now. All this cost reduction is anticipated of a further 100 million in extra fuel and foreign exchange costs during the current financial year compared with last. So you can see how one type of thing can just flow through the economy. It's affecting Virgin, it's affecting their staff, it's affecting their suppliers, it's affecting the families of the suppliers, the employees there as well. And it just trickles through. Virgin capacity climbed. The move to cut costs comes after a financial year where increased capacity and revenue only led to falling profits. Total domestic revenue was up by 6.3% to $3.9 billion, even though it was adversely affected by weak market conditions in both the corporate and leisure sectors in the second half of the financial year. 
However, domestic earnings of 133.4 million were dented by the cost associated with a 2.3% increase in capacity, and the group is already cutting back some of the increase in flights. The airline's international operations also took a hit from extended capacity with a 13.7% increase in available seats, driven mainly by the launch of Sydney, Hong Kong, and new Trans Tasman services. I can't imagine the Hong Kong Sydney link would be doing exceptionally well at the moment with all the civil unrest going on in Hong Kong. Perhaps I'm wrong. Even though total revenue increased by 16.5% to 1.3 billion, pre-tax and interest earnings for this segment of the business plunged to a loss of nearly 76 million, almost four times worse than last year's result. Virgin's low-cost offshoot Tiger Air also saw its loss worsen to 45 million as it took a 10.7 million hit from protected industrial action taken by its staff. The only part of the business that recorded an improvement in pro profits was the Velocity Frequent Fly division, where earnings rose to 122.2 million, up from 110.1 million the year before as the program added more members. Virgin also reaffirmed that it intended to remain the major shareholder in Velocity despite its minority partner Affinity exploring options to offload its 35% stake. So there you have it, guys. Let's have a look at the shares from Virgin. So you can see what from 2015, when did they, you know, the highest was at what, 56? And now we're trading at 15 cents. So it's trending down. It is definitely trending down. And I don't think this news is going to do it any good. I don't think it's going to do it any good. Let's have a look at their financial results that they released this morning. So total revenue of the group up. So the revenue is up to up 7.6% to 5.8 billion. All right, that color's not good. How's that? That's good. So gross underlying loss before tax down 135.6 million despite 158.8 million in fuel foreign exchange headwinds. So they're down 71.2 million. Statutory loss after tax, 315.4. I'm assuming that's 100,000, not million. 2.1 improvement in revenue per available seat kilometer. Positive free cash flow down 19.2 million on last year. Cash balance, an increase of 324.5 million. So 1.7 billion they've got there. Gross profit and loss, total revenue is up. Earnings before interest tax, yada, 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 is down. Underlying profit is down. Statutory loss. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That's million. That's million. 315.4 million. Oops. <laughs> oh, boy, that, that looks bad. Gross profits. Total revenue up. Down, 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 down. Statutory loss after tax is up. So you can see the financial results. I don't think, uh, there you go. I don't think there's much confidence coming out of this for this company. I feel sorry for the people who've lost their jobs, but I think I'm gonna be saying that more and more often over the coming months, guys, because it really feels like we're heading into a recession. So let me know what you all think, guys. You think this is going to be the beginning of another, another trend Another business, how the airline sector is going. I thought, you know, costs of international or domestic flights had gone down. It was filling us with confidence. And we'll jump back here. Let's look at the key points. Virgin Australia has posted an underlying loss before tax of 71.2 million. In response, the airline is cutting 750 office jobs and also planned to cut its capacity, the number of seats available. The airline also blamed rising fuel costs and a lower Australian dollar for its worsening financial performance so you can see how these issues are adding up let's just have a look before we jump away we'll look here at some of the australian data i mean let's just jump to our currency and see where it's headed from last year just as a refresher we can have a look here well this is a four hour one we'll go to one month you can see in well 2019 we're heading down trending down we're now at 67 cents 2017 to 2018, it was heading up to about 80 cent at its peak. 
Yeah, it looked at it was 75 cents. The last time it was this low was in 2016, 2015. Before that, it was up down to 11, 2011 when it was actually over a dollar, a dollar ten US. I remember that. I could not believe it. I could not believe it. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me for this episode. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Take care.